Hi guys. So I have permanently moved to Hyperland and I have a certain set of reasons on why. And I'm going to go over them with you because, well, that's what you do, I guess. Uh, the main reason is I don't really have to worry about extensions breaking. That's not actually a thing. I wanted to say it to see how it felt and it felt dumb to say it. <clears throat> Mainly because, well, again, they don't break. They, the gnome just updates and they no longer work, which is not breaking because you can literally change the metadata and they'll work again 99% of the time. So they kind of just don't get turned on. There's actually a way to discard that and allow it for extensions that are not made for that version of gnome to always work. Unless again, they need to have specific things updated within them. There you go. The more you know. I think it's called on safe mode or something like that. There's like a command where you can just force them to do their thing because that's that's actually pretty cool. I get to control what I want, like completely and utterly. Gnome, I can do it endlessly. I can I can customize it any way that I see fit, any way that I see possible. It's endless for me. Sure, that's great. With this, I can do the same thing except way more way way more uh say i wanted to create a widget right here okay right around my face or over here and i wanted it to be the weather i can literally go in there create the widget have it float on my desktop move it anywhere i want or literally just have it stuck to my desktop if i wanted to i could click here have a panel that pops down the weather tells you what it's going to be like in the seven day forecast yada 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 wind speed humidity you name it it's possible um, if I wanted to, I could have this bar instead pop up right here. Like, utilize the other sides of the uh, dock. I think that would be pretty cool. I have everything that GNOME has and more. And look, there's a Cache OS icon in here. That's so cool. How cool is that? That's so cool. This still needs to be hooked up. And this works great when there's something playing, of course. So if I go in here, I turn this on. Okay, you can see that this extends and you get to see exactly what is going on. That's great. And here you have complete playback control over your volume and stuff. I like that. That's nice. You know what? I don't recommend that people use green screens anymore, especially when you don't have the proper lighting setup for it. Look at this. Bro's literally glowing on the edges. There is advanced technology now with NVIDIA where you can... It, it can literally cut you out of anything and it does a better job than a green screen does because you don't have any of the green glow. He needs to do something about this because it's actually a really easy fix. He needs to add a secondary extraction for the color and feather his way in to his fingers because our skin glows in case you don't know. So it would be pretty easy for him to pull this off. Anyway, back to the video. I have everything I need. Everything. I built the stuff that I required, like this menu. It works. It functions. I'm not touching it anymore. Uh, if someone wants to help me optimize it, feel free. I will not say no. As long as the menu continues to work and function as I have it now, yeah. Because it's 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 legit. It's, it's actually perfect. It just functions. It works. It's not slow. It's fast. It's efficient. I mean, I could optimize parts of it, but it would probably break the search again. The best part is when I open it, I can just start typing because I have it to automatically steal the focus of everything you're doing. And I do that so that you could just press the Windows key if you have it set up for the Windows key to open it and you're just good to go. It makes so much more sense. All right. Um... I'll still use the same apps as always. So as you can see here, we have... Uh, you know, uh, pie axis as I like to call it, and the blur is still there, which is nice. And uh, we can thank the automatic, oh great one known as Hyperlint for this. I can go in here and I can go and change the transparency levels. If we want it just pure glass, we could do that. If we want it like semi-transparent or whatever, we could do that. There's just lots of things to do. I like about 65%, I feel it looks nice. Workspaces are great. 
they function as they should. If I want to like move something to a certain workspace, uh, I can do that. So there we go. I move that to workspace 13 and I could do all of this with my mouse. I don't need to do anything at all with my keyboard in Hyperlit. I made it into a desktop environment and that is going to piss some people off. But I'm going to tell you something. As long as I'm enjoying my desktop, as long as I'm enjoying interacting with my computer, your opinion on the subject does not matter. Hello, Mr. Spider. I love that. I hate getting into uh, Discord notifications sometimes. Your opinion doesn't matter on the fact. Hyperlint is literally designed to do whatever you want as a person. This is my Hyperlint. This is what I designed it to do. To be useful, to be easy to use, to be user friendly, to just not get in my way. Other hyperlins are designed to be keyboard warrior tryhardy with the weird borders around everything and super glowing everything and it just looks off putting and I don't I don't get it. I tried to use it that way, but in the end it just it's not the type of aesthetic I want. It doesn't work for me. I need something clean looking, I need something modern looking, and I achieved that. And that's what matters. I can change the transparency, I can change the blur amount, I can do whatever I want. And that is what makes a person happy, as long as you end up where you need to be. Right? Oh man, oh man. Did you know earlier when I was streaming, somebody said that people are saying that I'm mean? I'm not mean. I'm really not. I have no filter. I am honest. I will say the truth, and if it gets me in trouble, it gets me in trouble. It doesn't make me mean. You find that mean, it says more about you than it says about me. People are upset at me because I can take Linux, I can teach it in a way that anybody can learn it, remove all the hurdles and all the problems, I ignore Reddit, I show the best distros, I show the way to use those distros efficiently and people end up learning so efficiently that they don't need Reddit or anything for assistance. They'll end up remembering because again, if they forget, they can go back and watch the videos that taught them and that content is there to push everybody forward. Same thing with Hyperlint. My goal in the end with Hyperlint is to bring people in that would be terrified and have them be comfortable, have them feel at home, have them express themselves the way that they want to without fitting into a bubble or a category to make other people feel better. You get to use what you want. You want to use Microsoft Edge? Do it. You want to use Vestop? Do it. If you want to use Cider? Go for it. If you don't like using Lutris, don't. Use Heroic Game Launcher. If you don't like using that, Learn how to set up Wine to do whatever you want. If you don't like Caden Live, use DaVinci's Resolve Studio. Do whatever your heart desires to make life easier for you. Because you, your want, your needs are all that matter in the end. Nobody's opinion gets to justify your choices. Try to remember that. Because always giving into other people's opinions creates a weak world and creates weak individuals and individuals that will second guess themselves and then those people will think that linux is the most impossible thing because of the individuals that make it that way that's not what i try to accomplish gnome is always constantly putting down being put down because they make the hard choices they know what they want they know it's a part of the workflow and they push it people complain if you want something done in gnome open up a pull request. It's never going to be easier than that. Talk about it, open up a thread, open up a discussion, you're able to do that. Open up an issue saying if I implement system tray icons in a more modern way that's easy to maintain, would you guys accept it? They're most likely going to say yes, because the only reason they move remove system tray icons is because the code was so outdated, no one was willing to maintain it. So if you give it a maintainer, they are most likely going to allow it to happen. People don't understand that. You don't just throw things into a bottle, shake it, and out comes gnome. That's not how that works. 
Everything is an individual part, the panel, the dash, the system tray, all of it is a module that is combined to create everything that is known. Same thing for KTE, it's all individual parts. And when they're updating from one version to another, they have to update those individual parts. And if something doesn't get updated, it gets left behind. So, you know, if I get bored one day, I will go implement system tray icons into GNOME and be done with it, make people happy. It's not like they don't want it there. It's just that nobody has offered to put it there, to code it, to maintain it, to keep it. And everybody thought that Cosmic was going to become the next big thing that I was going to pay attention to. Nope. No, I'm not a fan of Cosmic. Not at all. I don't like the way they handle themselves. I don't like what they've done with it. I liked it when it was in pre-alpha. It was stable. It was easy to daily drive. And I can't stand KDE. After 24 years, I'm just done. I'm done with the bugs. I'm done with the issues. I'm done with all the problems. I'm just done with it all. I just need to breathe, you know, to finally just function. And that's just something it does not allow me to do. And I just realized that uh, I broke something. And we're just going to do this. There we go. Anyway, I hope you guys understand. I will still be covering GNOME when GNOME 49 comes out. I will take a look at it. I'll do change law videos. I will cover as much as possible. Right now, GNOME is becoming, GNOME 49 is becoming a massive change. GNOME 50 is going to be even bigger, and I'm looking forward to both. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support me, you can do so by checking the description. You'll find a membership uh, for YouTube, and you can also find a Ko-Fi if you want to do a one-time donation. Bye, everybody.